I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about partial fractions. In problem number 43, we'd like to evaluate the integral of x squared plus x plus 2 divided by x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 dx. I'm going to break this thing up using partial fractions and right off the bat I see on the bottom in the denominator I have a linear factor and I have an irreducible quadratic factor. So I'm going to have two fractions uh, and so let's write this down. So I've got my x squared plus x plus 2 divided by x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 and the way that this is going to break down is I'm going to have a fraction for my x minus 1 on the bottom. I'll have a over x plus 1 plus I'll have another fraction for my x squared plus 1 factor. This is an irreducible quadratic so on top it could be linear. So this is a bx plus c. And now we're ready to solve for the a, b, and c. Now let's clear the fractions out. If I clear out these fractions, what I get is I get x squared plus x plus 2 is equal to a times x squared plus 1 plus uh, bx plus c times um, x plus 1. All right, so we've got um, this all set up, ready to go, and now we need to choose some good choices for x to start solving for a, b, and c. Uh, one that's obvious is I could let x be negative 1. All right, now if x is negative 1, then what happens here? Well, I get negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 1 is 0, plus 2 is 2, and negative 1 cancels this whole term out, and negative 1 squared plus 1, this is 1 plus 1, I get 2a. In other words, a equals 1. All right. Uh, unfortunately, there aren't really that many more good choices here. Um, I guess I could use that x is equal to 0 to help me out here. It's not a great choice, but it's a choice. Let's see what happens when x is equal to 0. If x is 0, I have 2 on this side. And on this side, I have 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times a, so a. And then I have 0 times b and 0 plus 1. So this is c and this is 1, so plus c. Well, a is 1, so c must also be 1. So c is equal to 1. All right, now I need to solve for b, and so I need to get something involved that has b in it. How about the things that have x squared? How many x squared are sitting around here? Well, how many x squared are on the left side? Just one. So there's one x squared on the left. How many x squared are on the right side? Well, there are ax squared here, and there's a bx times x, so a bx squared here. So it's a plus b. So this is equal to a plus b. a, we know, is 1. So b is equal to 0. And now we're ready to rewrite this integral using our partial fractions. This integral is equal to the integral of a over x plus 1. So this is 1 over x plus 1 um, plus bx plus c over x squared plus 1. b is 0, so it's just c, so 1 over 
x squared plus 1 dx. And now we're ready to take an antiderivative. The antiderivative of 1 over x plus 1, that's just a natural log of absolute value of x plus 1. And the antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 1, that's just a tan inverse of x plus c. And we have our antiderivative.